So it's great to be here. Thank you to the many of you who've decided to come out um, to save our country because we have a country to save. I'm going to talk at first about some policy issues, and then we're going to get into the politics of all of this. So you're going to get a whole gamut of it. Because I look at the situation in our country. It's not good. No. And you don't have to turn on the news to see it's not good. We are $34 trillion in debt. We're having to borrow money just to make our interest payments. China owns some of that debt. We are now, for the first time, paying more money in interest payments than we are our defense budget. You know who's paying attention to that? Russia, China, and Iran. And I would love to tell you that Joe Biden did that to us. But I've always spoken in hard truths, and I'm going to do that with you today. Donald Trump and our Republicans did that to us, too. You go back and look at that $2.2 trillion COVID stimulus bill that expand welfare, expanded welfare, that's now left us with 80 million Americans on Medicaid, 42 million Americans on food stamps. That's a third of our country. And did Republicans try and make it right? No. Nope. They doubled down and opened up pet projects and earmarks for the first time in 10 years, pushing through 7,000 of them last year. In the 2024 appropriations budget, Republicans put in $7.4 billion worth of their pet projects and earmarks. Democrats put in $2.8 billion. Now you tell me who the big spenders are. All while one in six American families can't afford their utility bill, 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. 50% of American families can't afford diapers. It's a problem. So the first thing I think we need to do to fix the economy is we need to put an accountant in the White House. And the way this accountant will take care of it is the first thing we're gonna do is claw back the $100 billion of unspent COVID dollars that are still sitting out there. Sure. Instead of 87,000 IRS agents going after middle America, let's go after the hundreds of billions of dollars of COVID fraud. One out of every $7 was spent fraudulently. If 8% of our budget is interest, quit borrowing, cut up the credit cards. You have to balance a budget every day. I had to balance a budget as governor. Why is Congress the only group that refuses to balance a budget? We'll stop the spending, we'll stop the borrowing, we'll eliminate their pet projects, and I'll veto any spending bill that doesn't take us back to pre-COVID levels. That will save us trillions. Then we'll take as many federal programs as we can out of D.C. and move them down to the states. That will dramatically reduce the size of the federal government, and it will empower people on the ground. Think education, think health care, think welfare, think mental health. When you cut those strings and send it down, you've got the decisions being made closest to the people instead of Washington bureaucrats. And then we're seeing the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. We need to open up the middle class. That's why we need to cut taxes on the middle class and simplify the brackets. We need to eliminate the federal gas and diesel tax in this country. And we need to make small business tax cuts permanent. Small businesses are the heartbeat of our economy. We need to start acting like it. Amen. And speaking about Congress and their spending, Congress has one job, one job, and that's to make sure they put out a budget on time. Look at what's getting ready to happen this week. They're talking about another shutdown. Do you know Congress has only given us a budget on time four times in 40 years? Four times in 40 years. When I'm president, you don't give us a budget on time, you don't get paid, period.